Republican name, eh? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Your bones are talking to you and working you, you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Talking to me and working me. You know, um, you know, I started out by saying there were two reasons, two several thing, uh, things different about this uh, publication. The, 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 new, the new, uh, the new, the new, the new, um, the new, uh, the new, the new, the new, the new, the new, Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, I wanted to tell you a couple of other things, but whenever you, uh, I know you had some questions, but you remind me because I, I don't want to. No, no, say, say, say now. Nah, my questions are always, uh, hey, they're, they're, go ahead, inconsequential to what you have to say. You the man. Go ahead, hit it. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I tell you, it's a, it's a, it's an area of publishing uh, concern. It's a small one, mm-hmm. and it's called Flood Editions. And Flood is very germane. The word because we're on a flood plain here. Uh huh. And in St. Louis, you're talking about East in, in, uh-huh, oh, so, yeah. you're talking about East St. Louis. You're in a flood plain. You're saying. Right, right. East St. Louis is on the flood, flood plain, and St. Louis, too. Mm-hmm. And we both had some really, really horrendous floods. We also are situated on what is known as Tornado Alley. So it's about five or six states running uh, south by southwest. Mm-hmm. And uh, comes out of Missouri, uh, Illinois, on down all the way to Oklahoma. And uh, Tornado Alley, so they've been horrendous tornadoes. There was a tornado here in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. That, that rang church bells in Boston. Whoa. You, well, hold, yeah. hold, 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 wait, wait, hold, hold, back up, back up. So you're not just being poetic, you're actually I mean, being uh, accurate. Earthquake, I'm sorry, earthquake. Earthquake, okay. So, there was an earthquake Ooh. here. And this is, uh, see, in addition to this being Tornado Alley, it's also uh, a fault. Mm. It's, it's, it's an earthquake fault. And we experience them little ones mm. all the time. But it was an earthquake in the 18, early 1800s that shook church bells in Boston mm. and broke windows in uh, Philadelphia. Oof. So... Uh, you know, I don't want to go into the science or the uh, relativity of all this because uh, it says something about, uh, you know, about climate change. You know, something can happen in Washington State that will affect St. Louis, East St. Louis area, the Midwest. Or one of our writers called the heart of the heart of the country. You know, I wish you wouldn't be telling me stuff. You know, I got to come back that way in December for the month of December, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't need, I don't need to hear this, Eugene. I don't oh, need yeah. to hear this. I don't need to yeah, hear this. Yeah, yeah, I want you. Well, yeah, my birthday is December first. December first. <laughs> I might be there by December first. Let me write that down. December first. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a little. I'm, well, they don't know it yet. They don't know, it, but I, I want to do something with the writers mm. and. Uh, my daughter Treasure and my grandkid. I know it's going to be with writers, so it'll be the people that you know. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do it by some, and with the social distance, you know, I want to be about that's all right. people or something like that. Hey, I ain't getting you nothing anyway. I don't give people presents for birthdays. I just no, give no, people no, I'm presents. Not, oh, I'm not interested in that. I'm, 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 mess, I'm messing with you. I'm just talking about <laughs> um, have, have a session and have everybody uh, read something and speak. Uh-huh. I would like to do that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, not 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 a not gifts. I'm gonna provide literals, you know. You know, you know, you you know something, Eugene. In one of these, in one of these uh, primal cultures, one of these uh, native autochthonous cultures, they say what happens on somebody's birthday. People are supposed to be able to come up to you and tell you all the wrong things they've done to you and for you uh, I, 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 for the last year, and you're supposed to have to forgive them. <laughs> I'm just saying. Look, I don't know if it apply to you. I'm just trying to explain this to you, right? So, so, so any day, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um... yeah, but back, back back to the flood. So so so. so yeah, but anyway, that's uh, so it's a flood edition. You know, it sounds like nothing, but this place floods all the time. Mm. Uh, when you come, I'm going to show you 
a place about six miles uh, east of the Mississippi River Bank, where mm -hmm. the Mississippi River once used to be banked. Mm -hmm. So between the bank, the eastern bank of the Mississippi River, meaning East St. Louis, and where I live, uh, there were, I mean, there draw, I got drawings, you know, the people, people of the day wrote drawings and they showed people in miles away in water in canoes, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, yeah, it used to be. Yeah. But what happened is a lot of land filling and, and because uh, you can't, as Morrison likes like to say, you know, the river has a memory and it always finds its way back. So oh. you can dam it, you can dam it, you can, uh, you know, farm it, the land. It's, you can do anything you want to, the river is going to eventually find its way back to its well, origin. Well, you know, any, any body of water, because I lived in Florida for a while, for, well, just, well, it doesn't matter, but there's a place called Lake Okeechobee. And they don't understand I know, it. I know about it. But you know, that yeah. lake is going to take, retake Florida one of these days. But back to this thing, let, let me say something about this uh, small, you're calling it um, the small press, not small press. What, what, what do you call it? What, what are you calling it again? What's the name you call it? The, uh, the name of the press, the publishing house that, that, that brought out the book, is Flood Editions. Right. But I mean, it's you, you, you're saying it's, it's in a certain category of publication, small. A small press. Yeah. It's a small press, but I thought you said something else. After, after, and, and it's also known as classic. Okay, good. Because I told him, the guy who knows a lot about it, and as soon as I told him, he said, he said, whoo, he whistled and sucked in his breath, and he said, man, they, they are a classic. Yeah, they, 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 they published, they published some major figures in literature, you know, from Latin America, and you, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of um, iconoclastic writers who are great. I mean, they've been Nobel level, but, you know, mm -hmm. maybe Hermit. And they've also published Jay Wright. Oh, yeah, we was talking about Jay Wright. Let, let, I, I think Jay Wright recommended uh, Duma, and then they contacted me, you know. Oh, okay, there's a connection. But let me tell you a couple more things about the book. Uh, okay, so... Uh, it's you know it's it's integrated into um, the the lore and the, the cosmology of this area you know mm -hmm. the geography you know and it's the closest uh, press the press of, of the presses that have published Duma for them beginning with Southern Illinois University of Carbondale. Mm -hmm. Going on to Random House, mm -hmm. going on to Thunder's Mouth Press, yep. whose owner is Neil Ardenberg, the son of Liz Claiborne, and going on to Coffee House Press, where, you know, mm -hmm. it is, uh, which will republish the fiction, Echo Tree. Oh, that's anyway. Ne that's next year? When is that? No, actually coming out in December. Who's going to publish no, that? We, we will have advanced copies in December. Who's going to who's going to who's going to, who's going to publish that? Coffee House. That's Coffee House Check Press re-releasing it. Okay. Re-releasing it. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, one thing I've always wanted to do that we're doing in uh, neither an act or main mm -hmm. because of Dumas' potency mm -hmm. and his. Uh, uh, Inter and intercultural communications and hookups and interliterary hookups is we have a glossary in the back of Needs of a Natural Man. Yeah, I saw it. Very, very good. Excellent. Yeah. Needed. yeah. And that's a, that's, a, that, that's a major thing. Yes. I mean, you know, we, well, we came up with it together, but the point is that uh, I've always wanted to do that. Mm. And in all these iterations of Dumas' poetry, there had never been one. We had, a, you know, two or three footnotes, like in Goma, mm. you know. But uh, but so this is this is 
it's a very, very close to my heart, very, very precious thing that we were that I feel uh, we were able to do. Yeah. Uh, well, you do good work. You do good work. Uh, what, let me go back to to to, to this uh, to coffee house, rather uh, to uh, to the flood press here. You do you, you yeah, do flood you, editions. Yeah, flood editions. Okay. Uh, yeah. But but here's the thing. I think in this in this day and age, you know, everything is, you know, remember they had this whole globalist movement and this whole whatever. Now things are going up back to very, very local. But because of the way yeah. the technology is, it doesn't matter where you are. You're going to be able to still be global. You have to be very local in what you're That's doing, right. but you're going to be global. So this might be even a better move to have some sort of big house that, that, that swamps them. If it's a small house and, and they get on the internet, you're, competing, whatever. you're competing with uh Two or three thousand books, like what Random House publishes a year, right? Exactly. And it's worth two to five thousand books a year. So you got to try to, you got to be a little dog, you know, a little dog trying to trying to make it in that, in those waters, you know. Yeah, but you know, there's the other thing too, because years ago, I'm not going to do this, uh, but. Well, maybe I will do it. But years and years ago, there's this whole thing where you can publish a book. You know, say you publish a book di digitally, right? And say yeah. you're going on a book tour and you need, say, 300 copies of that particular book. Right. They'll just and print up the 300 those. and just take that with you. But you, it's still you can always publish another another 300, whatever. There's companies that do yeah. that. Is this one of those presses that do that? This, this, uh, That's this called print? publishing on demand. Right. So is this it's a printing on demand? So I have. I have friends, in fact, Tanahisi Coach's father owns a publishing house that does that mm. called Black Classics Press in, oh, yeah, no in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey. So, well, those, those are some of the things I wanted to tell you. There are a lot of other things, of course. Ishmael Reed wants to be do a documentary on Henry. He wanted to know if, uh, if, uh, he wrote me and asked me if, if, uh, if Millie Dumas had ever been compensated, I, that's no. I mean, I, it was kind of a joke, like you know that, that you know he, he, it was like on the on the nine hundred and thirtieth page or whatever. I mean, his death let alone being compensated. Mm. But um, the, the, so, but there's a lot to talk about. He he wants to do a story and hopes to uh, and. Uh, Encourage somebody to do a documentary on Henry. You know, you know Ish Ishmael is my man. I've known it. Well, I say I've known Ishmael. I, I met Ishmael Reed when I was the first went to in 1968. By 1968, okay. he came to a class, to my English class when I was at Bronx Community College, and actually did a, you know, a little presentation there. This is way before all the stuff came out. You were, you were where? Which community college? That's the Bronx Community College in the Bronx. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm a Bronx boy. Come on now. Yeah. Bronx, we get you. everybody. You got to come through to the Bronx to get any kind of rep. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. Holy kid, man. No, but yeah. here's the thing Ishmael's very important because talk about publications. This this man is all over the world. Uh, he's all over the world. I mean, he publishes he's all, all over the universe, world. You know? So basically, if you hook up with that, and he can maybe just get us uh, interview Loretta if, if, if he can, because you know Loretta's very private and she's very quiet. He said he wanted to interview. I said it. Well, yeah. let, let's see if she wants to be interviewed. This is the question. But here's yeah. the other thing about Ishmael, whatever have you. What I'm what I'm trying to get at with, with, with Ishmael, his reach is, is far and wide, just like this Preston could be reached be far and wide. In fact, I just I, right, I saw his play, um, the the haunting of uh, L um, uh, Lynn Miranda, whatever that guy is for for the thing. Yeah, uh, when I was in, yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw it at, at the Eureka Post Cafe. Uh, uh, well, yeah, yeah, excellent piece. This is why nothing in these days can can get away from anything. This is why Henry's so important because yeah. Henry's got stuff like I, I, I was mentioning before. When I listen, especially well, especially really with his more of his short stories, he's prime for science fiction. I just don't understand why people don't pick him up. I mean, this is like, you know, something's got to be done. Well, yeah, I showed you that big fat book from 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 the Netherlands. Remember that? Yeah, but I, I put it in your hand. I knew. No, I, I took I took one of those pictures. The picture of that guy hanging. I put. A I, put of it. I, I no, I, I took a picture of the. In that book, I put it on my on my Instagram. That picture of the of the, of the lynching of that uh, lynching, yeah, and that that, that that sparked a lot of uh, a lot of uh, attention. But yeah. this, back to Henry, I'm just trying to say he's such an important figure. I'm so glad that he's like water seeking this level. I mean, you know, he's like a, he's on a cut. <laughs> He was born on the cusp yeah. of cancer in Leo, so I, I so I'm, I'm thinking that you know this is this is his time once again. 
Uh, and and I think it's almost like a season for Hendrix. I'm going to do everything I can. There's a, there's a thing I really want to do. I can't say it right now, but I want to do it. one of his short stories. I want to present it uh, in New York, actually, if I can. I got to talk to some people. And then also next year for the, um, for the uh, uh, I have a chance again to have a reading of, of you know, the, the thing that I adapted that includes his poetry and his, and some, and, and two of his short stories. Uh, down right. in North Carolina, uh, you know, Black Arts, the, the, the festival, the, the National uh, Theater oh, Festival. The Theater Festival, yeah. Yeah, so, so I want to... Somebody wanna... called me after I was coming. A woman called me the other day after I was coming down there. You're going, you're yeah. going next year? Huh? You're next gonna... year, yeah. Oh, then we both can look. We got to talk. I, 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 I'm going to write you the proposal and see what, see what, see what, what can happen because we all can, we can okay. take part in this. Okay. It'll be really okay. good. But look, uh, back, back to Henry... Why, let me ask you this: Why is this happening now? Is it, uh, I mean, I know it's steadily we keep on you know dripping Henry here and there, here and there, but it seems like now these are two major things that's happening. Uh, what, 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 what's the impetus for this? How did this happen? Well, what? you know what happened is um, he's been circulating, and I give permission oh about ten times a year for people to use his work in anthologies. I just, in fact, I just gave permission. For people to use his work in um, in a in a a book of poetry about dogs. About who? And his by dogs. Dogs. And his poem Hunt. That poem oh, Hunt. Oh yes, yes. Okay, dogs. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. I just gave him permission, you know, mm. and uh, to use it. Mm. So there are all kind of things happening all year. So mm. he's been. He's in dozens, scores of anthologies and magazines, you know, uh, all over the world. You know, just here and there, a story here, a poem there, you know, and so forth. Anyway, uh, so that's been happening. But I thought it was very interesting because we started on this work with um, um, Flood Editions last year. They contacted me. Mm -hmm. And the guy said he hoped last year around spring and he hoped to to come out in spring of this year. Well we knew of course we knew nothing about coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But uh the way I think, you know, and uh, the way I interact with karma and uh you know this well you know, you know, chakras and you know you know the whole yeah, deal. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh I I knew something was coming and uh, and I seem to know it, whatever it is, if it's a storm, if it's some kind of racial conflagration, mm -hmm. if it's a, uh, something like 9-11, I have these, uh, I, you know, it could be premonitions, I can see, and I can't see exactly what happened, but I tell people around me that something awful is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And... I said, told my daughter there would be a rash of murders of black men and boys. And then she said, wow. So Trader always said to me, like, Dad, how do you? I said, well, baby, when you've been, when you've been through several revolutions, you recognize cycles. That's know? it. Cycles. And I said, you, and you have to know something about governmental systems and religious uh, theology, you you, you, you got to know, got to be able to bring several um, process, uh, philosophical, cosmological, ontological processes to uh, bear on whatever you want to um, you know, figure out or whatever you want to divine. Mm -hmm. You got to, you can't just think like someone who not only knows democracy. Yeah. You gotta know communism. You gotta know social socialism and, and the different types of socialism, Fabian socialism, democratic socialism, uh, the socialism in Tanzania, you know, African socialism. You gotta know communism, which is not going on in Russia. Mm. So I just, you know, <laughs> oh God. And, and so I said, so you got to have several ways to think about things. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's the problem. And I've done, I, I think I told you, I've done 60 Zooms. And mm -hmm. that's what I say to people. 
You cannot figure this out thinking like a Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And a, and a Democrat or a Republican. It'll never work. Well, I, my, 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 what would a Buddhist? Yeah. Buddhism and the blues are very uh, kindred souls because mm. both of them say, philosophically, both of them say, in order to get over something, you got to go through it. Mm. Mm. And so, so that's what I what I do. You know, I meditate six times a day. You know, I, I dip into this, I dip into that. And I remember Tony Marsh and I had this incredible conversation about about abortion. And she said, like Maya said, I'm I'm pro choice, but I have a problem with abortion. Mm. So we we started talking. And she said, and we, we, uh, of course, we concluded that, well, there must be a third way. And then we talked about African consensus. But I, I talked about, I talked to my daughter, I talked to my mentor, you talked to the kids, uh, you know, in school. You, you know, you have to have different ways to, okay. um, assess what is going on mm -hmm. and to deploy your knowledge of the world. Well, there it is. Deploy the knowledge. First, get the yeah. knowledge, and then deploy it. Deploy. So you, 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 you know, you have to think like this. You have to think like a Buddhist. You know, mm -hmm. think like a, a a Hindu. Think. I mean, you just think. I mean, not that you got to go over the goal. Think like a Muslim. Think. Mm -hmm. You know, you you got to you got to just kind of okay. What you know, put it in that frame. And so that's why I said to her. I, that's how that's how I can tell you these things because I've been through so many revolutions. But you also both, the, but, but, both the, the kind where you know uh, countries were destroyed and reborn, and the RPMs. Here's a here's what I here's what and, I call it, and and, 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 I, and I, as my consciousness was coming into being. What would become fifty some African countries started to happen. Mm. Baldwin said when he finished uh, 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 another country, he signed off in, in in Istanbul because he said there he wanted to go to an African country, but there were no countries in Africa, which he wasn't completely right because there was Egypt and Ethiopia. But he, what he meant is. Yeah, the rest of the country is yeah. colonized. Well, well, now it's now there's 55. So there we go. We got the five yeah. five happening right now. But listen, I, I have to ask you a stock question. I have to ask you a stock question. I I don't really like stock questions, but I have to ask you a stock question. Why have you done it? Why have you kept on this Henry Dumas thing all these years? I'm, when I say why, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying why why. I mean what I what, 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 well, what what is it? Well, here's, what, here's the interesting twist in here. When we, you know, we were in deep mourning. Henry and I had bonded. I only knew him 10 months. In August of, uh, uh, of uh, August of 1967, he and I started to work at the experiment in higher education with a whole bunch of uh, people, some very neatly coiffed people, and some were revolutionary, some were crazy. Some were South African exiles. And we were all teaching and working, <laughs> counseling at the experiment in higher education. It's like, it's like Douglas and you all, know, you know, those kind of, like CUNY and Manhattan, you know, you know, radical. No, right? like, like Livingston College. And, no, it's just like Livingston College with Tony Morris and Stan. And, and yeah, you know, I know yeah, exactly what yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's what that's yeah, what and, and, and we had set them up as like like the street academies, you know, in Oakland and he said, oh, you know, storefront academies, you know. Yeah. And people on the corner come in the consciousness. Exactly. Come in the consciousness. Come in the consciousness, people. And I was one of them. On the corner, in the barber shop, you know, in there the hat shops, in the pool room, come is. into consciousness. There it is. So, um, so what happened is, I went to I went to Kevin one day and everybody was crying, you know, just openly crying. I would have been said, 
Hank is dead. He was killed this morning in a subway, early, early like one o'clock or something. For everybody, the students, the faculty, the kind of janitors, they loved him, man. Everybody was crying. So uh, I ended up going to represent the university with a suitcase full of money that I gave to Loretta, right? That I we collected. Everybody on campus gave some. Everybody in the system on college. Uh, the clubs, the bars, the restaurants, because he had read. I took and dragged him to everyone to read his poetry. And everybody gave me $3, $5, $15, $20, something. And I went, I had a, the day this, I had a, I had papers for her to sign so she could get whatever, the remainder of whatever he had coming, you know, from the university. Mm -hmm. And and the rest of the briefcase was filled with money, right? Now, I had two pistols. One one strapped to my ankle mm -hmm. and one that alternated between my hip and a sh uh, my hip and and uh, and you know and, and my back and back. So mm -hmm. this was before it was right around the time when the brothers had started hijacking airplanes, mm -hmm. but you could go. You they hadn't they they hadn't really gotten into all the searching and all that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> mm -hmm. anyway, because I thought, well, whoever killed Henry might want to kill me too, because you know that's the way mm -hmm. we thought. We were, yeah. we called it healthy paranoia. Hey, it's revolutionary so, times. Rev people understand revolutionary times. Poof. Yeah. So so so, and I went there. And uh, I went to the funeral, um, and I delivered to her what I needed to deliver her. And I wrote a poem that was published in, in a paper in a magazine when I got back, literary magazine called Southwestern. It was called um, Poetic Reflections en Route to and During the Funeral and Burial of Poet Henry Dumas. Do you, do you still have that poem? Yes, and my book, uh, okay. I think I gave you Arkansas Memoirs. No, you did not give me Arkansas Memoirs. That's my point. What I'm trying to say is when I get there in December, then when we have that little soiree, what are we going to have, then perhaps you'll read that poem for us. Okay. Or, or read okay. it for me or something like that. Read it, read it inside well, yeah. the microphone. I want to so, hear it. So anyway, that, 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 that I got on it then. Okay, now, it's, it's a brilliant administrator. There were two black and one white. Uh, but the, the two black, Edward Crosley went to Kent State, and Donald Henderson went to the University of Pittsburgh, and he started forming black students through the PhD program. They're, they're awesome, both of them, and the other one went to Kent State. Mm -hmm. uh, but they talked Southern Illinois, you know, Southern Illinois, you know, and Dunham, mm -hmm. he was their influence. They talked Southern Illinois University into publishing what they call a showcase. It's like you publish them so they can be seen and maybe be picked up by a mass publisher. Right, sure. So Southern Illinois University published, you know, Poetry for My People mm -hmm. and Ark of Bone. Mm -hmm. And they were just to be showcased, you know, mm -hmm. they published 1,000 Hardy. And so um, one day, Okay, so I said, well, my work is over, you know? Mm. My work is over with Henry. So, because um, I was anxious to get on with my own career, you know? Yep, yep. And I said, well, we've done it, we've done it. So we had we had readings across the country, mm. and we had readings here, Major City, Baldwin, Red, Angelo, Dalera. Then Morrison went to... Quincy's house one day because he was babysitting her son. They were little boys. Mm -hmm. And um, she she asked, so what's up? Uh, what's new? You know, she was a, an editor at Random House, right? You, 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 who was who, uh, who is, who is, this, this the one? Was this Ishmael? Mm -hmm. who, who was that? Who was at Tony Morris's house? Who, who was that? Morrison went to Quincy's house. Oh, Quincy? He babysat her son. Okay, okay, okay. So when she, when he, when she got off of work, from Random House, she would 
stop at Mar at Quincy's house yeah. and pick up her son. Well, but I guess we better really? tell you, I guess we better say it's Quincy True because you know yeah. everybody Quincy might think True. it's everybody Quincy might think True, it's cute. Right. <laughs> so so he had, then she would say, well, what's new? And she he said, well, this is this 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 bad brother. Quincy said to her, he's a boss writer. So my friend mm, I can hear Eugene you. Redman was teaching at California State University Sacramento now. Co edited and so Quincy said to me that Tony that he took over there and said, Oh, this is new stuff and you know, different books and so on. But this one, these two. He said she sat she stood there and she then just dropped down on her ass right in front of the bookstore, I mean the bookshelf. And read until it was dark outside. Mm. She couldn't stop reading his stuff. That's right. That's and right. she said, "What can I get for his books?" And she said, uh, "He said you can't. They uh, they're uh, they out of print. You know, they, they you might get them." She said, "Well, do you you know this guy?" I said, "Yeah, it's a good friend of mine." Mm. He said, "Where is he?" She because he, he had told her, but she, she told him where I was. He told her where I was, and so the next thing he said, "Can you can you uh, get in touch with him? Can you give him his number?" And Quincy then connected us. In the meantime, I was coming in and out of New York every year, you know, for reading. I would come across country and do book parties with my own little books published mm -hmm. by Black River Writers Press, mm -hmm. my company, my family company, mm -hmm. and so. Then Morrison uh, brought him out, right? I changed the name of Play Every Play. I've, I mean, excuse me, uh, Portrait for My People Play Every Day to Play Every Day Play Ivory because I didn't want uh, the title to be, to sound so close to Margaret Walker for my people. Mm, okay. Yeah, 1942. Yep, yep. So, but the. The white guy who co-edited the, the first editions with me, he's the one who picked that title mm. from a title of one of Henry's poems, you yeah. know. Beautiful. And I never went along with it, but it was we were working in different places, so I said, okay, well, and he knew Loretta because uh, he and Duma had been students at Rutgers together, mm -hmm. and they were both married, you know, so they lived in, uh, married, student housing, you know, okay. married student housing. Okay. So he he knew Henry, and he knew Loretta, and the, the wives knew each other and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and the kids. So I went on and let that go. So anyway, she asked me, was there more work? And I said, well, yeah, I think I've seen some stuff. So, um, so I flew back one of my readings and I got a whole bunch of stuff with Henry and took it back with me, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I so I read it all and I told her, Well, uh yeah, that's some more stuff, but it it's not ready to be published. She said, Well, send it to me, let me look at it. And so Morrison's consciousness was ahead of mine. And so she said, she called me on the phone in California and said, this is brilliant. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my consciousness was, still, consciousness was still growing. You know how you, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you probably came through like this, somebody was way ahead of you. Yeah. And then you said, okay, you know. I mean, there were guys so far out there that, I mean, when I first heard Sunrise, I said, I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I loved it, but, you know, it was just about that screaming and stuff like that. Anyway, um, so so we got, uh, you know, the Green Stone, the novel out of it. Mm. And so then she said, is there any more? I said, yeah, but it, it's, uh, no. She said to me, um, I said, she said, this is brilliant. I said, yeah, but it's unfinished. Mm. And so, the novel, you know, on the great song. You know, on the great song, yeah. I said, but it's unfinished. Mm. 
So she said, we'll publish it. And I said, well, how come we'll publish it? It has no, uh, no dating one, you know, mm -hmm. no, no, no real conclusion. You know what she said to me? You finish it. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. No, I can't violate this, man. I said, how, how would I finish it? You figure it out. You conclude the novel. She she was doing a pub, book publisher thing, book editor's thing. That's that's her, that was her job. <laughs> and I I wish I had time to sit for you and tell you what happened. But no, we'll, we'll do it another time. We'll do it another time. What happened is I got physically sick. I had mm. to go to the hospital because I felt I was violating him. Uh -huh. Now, most of what I put in there were, were his words. I, I kept doing traces and runs, like when you run on a piano. They're just, you know, I get a running start and get half, get two thirds of the way through a novel and read it. And then I would find something that he had in his notes mm -hmm. that would fit it. Or in some dra in a draft of that novel. Mm -hmm. And there is that. And, and I kept looking and kept doing that until I could find something in his words except for my connectives, you know, just mm -hmm. some connections for the most part. Mm -hmm. And finally got it together, but I got sick because I, I didn't feel right about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't there to say, use that, use that, go over that, go to page 15 to, and the third draft, uh, at the bottom of that, the, the second box, and you'll find the key to how I wanted to conclude this novel. So, when you read it, you know the Green Stone. I got, I'll give you one here. I don't know if you read it, but um, I have it, the book. I have it here. I, I'm at my sister's house. I have all the books here. Okay, all you got to do is is read. He had included the book was to be part of a trilogy that was going to be a massive answer to Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. Okay. okay. The thing that, that Henry said, and anybody who knew him knew it, he would say, who's, in, who's invisible? You invisible? I ain't fucking invisible. Mm. Who the fuck is invisible? And you, you didn't even have to, you didn't even have to ask him what he was talking about. Mm. It was a battle he had with, uh, with Ellison. So the young, the, yeah, our generation rebelled on Ellison and John Hope Franklin. Mm. Ho Where did John Hope Franklin say, you are a brilliant man, but we can't go from slavery to freedom. Okay, hold on. The, the, uh, yeah. Eugene, I want you to hold your thoughts for a second. Hold your thoughts okay. for a second. I hate to interrupt, but I have to tell you something, right? I have okay, to tell you yeah. something. It's interesting. Two things. One, you know, when Richard Wright wrote uh, wrote a thing called A Long Dream, right. and it was the first book of a, a supposed trilogy. The next book, that's when Fish, well, the, the, the kid, it's a coming of age novel. The kid grows up, he, he has to leave the country. He goes to he goes to France. Yeah. Now, he's wrote, he wrote a second book. Now, I believe the book is called Isle of a Hallucination. But I'm not, maybe, that may be the third one. Anyway, he wrote a second book in that trilogy. Then he's supposed to write a third, third and that's that he's supposed to have completed that third book. And that's him coming back, back to America because of this whole civil rights thing. Okay. Yeah. So I can see that 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 momentum that that, that continuum. And I have yeah, I have yet. Yeah, I, no, I think the third right. book is yeah. written. I think the third book is written. I think it's supposed to be at Yale or something like that. No, I'm, I'm, whatever. I have to see it sometime. Anyway, but see, I'm a I'm a Richard Wright person and I'm a, I'm a Henry Dumas person. But I have to tell you this because this is this is key. Well, uh, you you know what happened is that uh, when I, I was with Loretta and we went and we visited Henry's grave. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I had this thing. That I said, and I said, well, you know, he has to go over to his proper ancestors. This was in my head, right? There you go. And so what happened? But I, but anyway, but anyway, to make a long story a little bit shorter, I was living, I was living in Summerfield at the time, and I was doing some stuff for some theater stuff. I was using some Henry stuff to whatever. And 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 um, what happened was, I, I was getting the ritual together. That we, we, uh, it's a summer program, and there was this lake. Up in the, up in upstate New York, 
that we were supposed to bring the kids to, and but I had to. We were supposed to go a week before, sometime before, just to check it out, whatever what, what he was going to do with the kids that I was working with at that that, that summertime. Uh-huh. So I had the idea. I said, "Well, look, I want to do this ritual at this lake because for one of the stories that I love, my favorite having to do my story is the lake. This just happened in my." I know that. I know you. Yeah, I love that story so much. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I uh and so so I was getting together and I had a, I had a girlfriend at the time. She was a dancer, and we she was working with me on this thing too, and then but we were going up to do this this ritual for Henry Duma. Now I got a uh you know a, a Malachi stone, you know the green that green stone, the the blue green kind of stone, and a puka shell, right? You right. And, and and I wanted to do this ritual. For, remember, I'm, see, I have to say, I'm a theater person, but I'm a ritual person. I can't explain this to you, but I'm right now it's to take too long. But so I wanted to do that, but I didn't know exactly what I was doing. But in one of Henry's poems, he has this 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 line is like a foreign language line. And so to to took a so short. Yeah, oh yeah. The, the, yeah, in fact, there's more. Yeah, that's in uh, that's in uh, Uncle Bones. Right. Well, it's stretched throughout and so is that is poetry. But Arthur Bones and doing an initiation. That's Abba, right. Abba, the Juka, Abba. Yeah. Okay, now here's what happened. Another guy I knew that was also a Henry Dumont Denison, right? He was he was from mm-hmm. uh, he was from he from uh Ghana. No, not Ghana, it's a new Uganda. I think Uganda. And I and just before I left that day, he called up out of the blue and said, Hey man, do you know what this means? And he, he he said, yeah, that's that's a that's a, a that's a going home ceremony. That's a ceremony to bring the person to the proper ancestors. So he gave me all the details of what to do. This was the morning I was leaving to do this ritual. Mm-hmm. So I got all the details. I uh, went, went into this water. I had to go. It was a whole process. I had to go. Through. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Went through the other thing. Later, the, the next time Loretta and I went to Henry's grave, and she said, "This is strange because the last time I was here, this is what I mean, the 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 the, the grave, you know, it says right now the grave is sunken in like something's missing." So what I want, what I'm trying to say, uh-huh. that there's this interesting thing, and there's uh, um that I think the proper things. So when you when you said that thing about the, the page fifteen or whatever it is, I'm saying that yeah, Henry gives you everything is there. He gives you all the answers. So he got this proper uh-huh. ancestor because he 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 had it in his poetry, you know. And, and That's he, right. Yeah, this got it in his poetry, and he got it in it. And he and he could he could assume the personality of an animal or a tree, and it was authentic. I mean, it, yeah. You, do you know how 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 he got that? You know, you know, you know. Uh, do you know the experience that he had in New York? No. What do you mean by the experience he had? And you know, well, hanging out with with Larry Neal and them, being like like a no. wind, like a wind is coming. No, out? no, no. He hung out with some Yoruba priest in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I know it. And at the same time, you know, they would develop their, those uh, African cities in the south. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever hear about that? Yes. Yes, I have heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, village. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the villages. Villages. yeah. It kind of broke up. It's sort of like what the Hebrew Israelites did mm-hmm. when they went over to the Negev. You mm-hmm. know, they they moved outside of the Negev in in Israel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Negev Desert. Yep. And and uh, they left Chicago and they left different cities and they've been they started in, in the sixties and they. Uh, they uh, they never had a theft. There's never been one divorce. There's never been a murder. There's never been a crime. They've gotten all kind of a walk from Israel from the government. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this is a a settlement of of, of black Americans, mm-hmm. Hebrew Israelites. Mm-hmm. You know, they return. You know, the initial Israelites were Jews. Mm-hmm. So. So, so that's, I mean, so there was a settlement, uh, you ever saw me in by your priest mm-hmm. in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Brooklyn's always been very advanced that way. Yeah. I mean, that's where Mary Elvis College is. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah. I know well, believe me, my, my, my spiritual yeah. advisor is a Yoruba priest. All a member of Brooklyn, so, but you know. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So what I'm just saying, see, there's, there's all these kind of weird things. Like like Loretta told me one time, I used to have this thing when I was writing plays real heavy. I would just put a record on and just keep on repeating the record. And one of the records I used to do was uh, Forest Flower, you know, Charles Lloyd, Forest Flower. Oh, yeah, me too. I, 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 I ain't did that. That's what Loretta told me. She said, yeah, that's the song, that, that, that's, the, that's the last one he, he played. I'm going, and it's just, these kind of things are like in the air, you know what I mean? I can't, yeah, oh, cool. like that. Now, now, let me go back to one last thing, you know, because. But I, did, I just wanted to, so that's how, that's how I got into, because I thought that, I know there was a big box of stuff, and we picked the stuff that was most finished, but I thought, well, that's it. And I didn't, I thought that I was a, go my way, Loretta would go her way, and Hale was going to go his way, and I wouldn't necessarily be involved with them anymore, ever, you know, because I moved to California. Mm. And I stayed out there almost 15 years. Mm. So that's how, that's how I started. Toni Morrison was part of the trigger when she said, is there other work? And I said, yeah, there's something about, you know, it's not, you know, she said, well, so, so, so then I started looking at it. And I, I could see flashes of greatness in it, but, uh, I, uh, I just did, for one thing, as I said, my consciousness was still developing, you know. You know, I was black, black, black as you could get, but there was another level, or there's not, there were several other levels of blackness that I had to achieve. Before I could get to uh, doing what I do, you know, doing what I ultimately would, could do, mm. and I mean, I understood it, and I was zealous about it. I was very evangelical about it, mm. but I just, you know, we had to, we had to do black studies, man. We, you know, when when they, when when students came to me and said, "Come over here, you got some degrees. <laughs> Come over here and teach us." And teach us uh, blackness, and my mouth fell open mm. because I had had degrees in white nationalism like everybody else who had gone to college, mm. black and white. Yeah, that's mm. what I say in my lectures. You know, mm. my degrees are in white nationalism. I could, I could, I could recite Shakespeare all night or T. S. Eliot. Mm. Yeah, T. S. Hey, I love me some T. S. Eliot. Tell you the truth. Yeah. yeah, but 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 but. But, uh, but, but, you know, I'm going at Oberlin where I was writing in residence and when I left Experimental College, I would go into the classroom bloodshot because I had finished a novel mm. 20 minutes before the class. Yeah, I hear you. I hear where you. The hell, where the hell was I going to read all of Baldwin, all of Hurston, mm. all of Jesse Foster Redden, all of Ellison, mm. all of Killens, mm. you know? What was I gonna read Booker T. Watch? What was I when was I gonna read W. B. Du Bois? When was I gonna read um uh, you you know just go on yeah, and on and yeah. on. That, that white national that white national took took all the air out of the room already. I yeah, got man, I was I was gone, man, and I was a good student and I was stored and I won awards, man, for the white folks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but at Washington University, where I went to grad school, white people came over, I'd be holding forth on the grass with a lot of white girls sitting with their legs crossed with no panties on. You know, that, you know, that was, that was going on too. Oh, uh, you know. And so see, I'd see. be out there holding forth, man, reciting my stuff. The eye in the ceiling won a national award. And so, so white people would come across campus to just look at me. Like, this nigga has won the most prestigious white award. Mm. They would come all the way over, and I, I could see them, man. I'd be in the cafeteria. You know, we'd be talking about, uh, uh, you know, I'd be talking about uh, it could be Henry James, and then we switch to, uh, 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 you know, uh, you, you name it, any one of the philosophers, you know, mm -hmm. any one of the European philosophers, mm -hmm. and start quoting one of them, and then drawing stuff in the ground, you know, mm -hmm. you know, phenomenology. Mm -hmm. Epistemology. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I was dying years. with that shit, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, in fact, one of my teachers told me to stop reading D.S. Eliot. A <laughs> Jewish professor, he helped shape me. He said, stop reading T.S. Eliot. And I said, uh, how long and why? He said, at least 10 years. He said, but uh, perfectly forever. And I said, why? And then he, why? He said, because everything is, <clears throat> everything is coming out a little Elliot. You're like a little oh, uh, mm. baby Elliot. Oh. You're not going to find your voice. Uh, that, 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 that's what dance that's what dance teachers say that you'll do do something they say lose, lose your arms for a while lose your arms lose yeah. your arms lose, yeah. yeah I got you yeah yeah so good advice so and he said yeah you're gonna you, he said you know you're gonna you know so and he said to me you know as much about T.S. Eliot than anybody on the faculty now hmm. he said I know what you're doing you know it's a kind of pattern where, where you say okay I'm gonna be good and so I'm gonna I'm gonna attack uh, I'm gonna attack the lions, you know. Mm. Everybody they tell me that is great, I'm gonna master that, mm. you know. And then one day I was half dozing. This is an undergraduate school, and a, and a man said, a professor whom I really admire, economist. He said, to be successful in the Western world, you have to master the ideas of three men. I mean, four men. And so I snapped up because I had been working all night scrubbing floors. I had a job as a student worker. And I had dozed off. And I heard that. He said, to go far in the Western world, to be successful, you must master the ideas of four men. Can I guess one of them is, Carrie, can I guess one of them is Aristotle? No. Oh, that's good. Go ahead. Hit hit me then. He said, said, Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, yeah. Charles Darwin. Oh, okay. No, he's gone. Um, Sigmund Freud. Mm-hmm. And, oh, man. The other one. And then he explained why each one, you know. You know, communism comes from Jesus Christ. <laughs> Darwin strives, you know. Fraud is, and then so you watched in 20, 30, 40 years what fraud does to the world. Fraud is the key to psychological, mental motivation of everything that we evolved in in the Western world. Somebody, some people would say it was psychosexual, but go ahead. I'm not going to argue with the guy. Some people would say what? Freud is actually psychosexual, but we won't get into that right now. Yeah, that's right, too. He, he meant that. He, he oh. talked that, too. He, he said that, too. Yeah. But anyway, he said uh, commercials. You know, commercials. He so said you, you have a bikini-clad woman sitting yeah. on a Cadillac. Yeah, sure. And then you buy the Cadillac thinking that, you know, you can attract the woman, that type oh. of woman. Yeah. They're not selling you the Cadillac. They're selling you that idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's that's pre R. He that's fraud. Yes, yes, pre R. It's, it's pu- public relations yeah, all the way. That's how they sell everything. I got this you. This is 1961. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so I I was equipped to go far, you know, as a white man. <laughs> Even though I always knew yeah. that I wasn't, wasn't, but I mean, I, I knew I, you know, I was going to master that and go far. Then that's when, when, I, when I left, uh, I got my master's and left, and my teachers asked me, and, you know, by that time, I was kind of hip on the black side, mm-hmm. and, what? What? and I said, I said, I'm tired of, I said, I'm tired of, tired of studying dead white poets. But uh, you, but you, then, you, you, hold on a second. Later in the hold, 60s, hold, hold, I wrote a little poem that said, after the 60s, oh, I wrote it during the end of the 60s, and I read it, so it says, uh, it goes, in the 60s, we stopped reading dead white poets and began reading dead black ones. The only different was the dead black poets were still alive. Oh. That's my point. Oh, and wow. then people, people naturally, people are going to say, what do you mean? Ooh. I said, because, oh. and I said, I'll tell you this one thing. I have never encountered a black poet 
who does not have a poem about lynching. Mm. That's what I mean by that poem. Wow. Well, I, I have a different interpretation, but that's because I'm of a different generation. But listen, you, Eugene, I got we got to stop here. We got to continue another time. I know, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and you know, you maybe, know we all teachers talk yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, but you know but, uh, but I always I, at that, let me ask you one personal question because you know, every time I always see, see you in, in like you know in this, when I saw you in, 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 the, in the 80s and in the 90s you always had before you started with the Afro well, yeah, I guess you still had the African thing but you always had that little you know the, that, that, that French tam on that, that to the side you know let's, 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 let's call it the Black Panther kind of the, about, yeah, Black Panther Party kind of tam on it. How did right. you start doing that, the artistic kind of uh, persona? Well, when did I start? Yeah. I actually started, I started in the early, uh, early 60s, you know, because, you know, uh, you know, that whole French thing, and I, I saw, um, what's the great Irish writer? You know, uh, uh, for, for Flannery, uh, what? Who? Um, uh, uh, oh, you uh, know, uh, uh, I know. Um, I know what you're talking about with with the, with the language thing. With the, uh, I, I, I know. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the Dubliners or whatever. The Dubliners and uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. Ma yeah Molly, yeah. Molly, Molly, somebody, them people like that. Yeah, yeah. Finnegan's Wake. Yeah, that's what Finnegan's. That's what I was thinking. Finnegan's Nobody Wake. Nobody understands it, but it's great, and everybody says. Uh, Sounds good. Log, people, everybody logs it, but. But without understanding it. <laughs> it just no, it sounds good. That's the whole point. It sounds I know, good. I know, yeah, of course, of course. So I saw people I saw that and I saw the French thing and then uh it was easy to move on. Well, we wore hats. See hats were big in the black community. Oh yes, always. You know, my brother told me a black man keeps his sky and his kick clean. Sky was your hat. Kicks your shoes, I, so you kept you kept your shoes and your hat. That's my bro my brother taught me, and you know, not, not, you, not, you, not, you, I, you black and you hip and you down and you ready and right. You gonna have you gonna have a nice pair of kicks on, and you gonna have a nice hat on. I was I was told I was told you have to have a hat, shoes, and a watch. Okay, okay, that's that's, that's what that's I was told. Idea. I'm just saying, you know. But I, I hear you. It's there. It's there. It's there. The codes get handed down. Okay, so 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 you still started wearing a tam. Then 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 you moved over to African attire. Yeah, and then what I did was I I started to break the tam, you know. And some people say you know they say I wore them rakish, rakishly, but break the, I br started breaking the kufis like like a tam. You notice I don't wear a koofy just straight up on my head. It's yeah. always crumped on the side. Yeah, that's that's a Nigerian way, man. You're doing a Nigerian yeah, I know, way. I know. You know. So I always so I always do that to keep it, you know, to mix those two, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got so, you. So yeah, man, well you got the role, but uh yeah, this is just so that's how I got in the in the Duma and, and then of course as I as I continue, I taught him, of course, constantly. Mm. And as I continued to edit him, I began to get a reputation for editing Dumas, you know? And Dumas is a literary... I never even thought about being a literary executive because I never thought of considered seeing it as... I never saw it as being going on that long. It was the farthest thing from my mind, you know? And... Uh, and Loretta and I laughed about it now because she said, you went to California. And, I said, and she said, and they all, all the people, he's gone. And we won't see him again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like a bad penny, you showed back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, man, that, so it's an interesting thing. It's like a guy told me, in Minneapolis, an artist told me that you might get, you might, you might become better known for your photography than your poetry. And I got a little bit upset about it, and I, and I was cringing for days after he said that. And then, and I thought, and then a, a critic who died, I tell you, he was gay, a brother. 
He said Redmond's work on Henry Dumas is better than his own work. <laughs> and I, so I walked around for days thinking about that, like I have to chew on that. So uh, it's it's fine. I'll take I'll take whatever. But the thing is, the, to get to, I, you know, I believe in Henry, and I and I and I, and, and I always have. And, uh, you know, he taught me so much, man. We were three years apart in age. And uh, I got so many techniques from him. I mean, teaching, like, going in with music. And I've written about it, you know, going in with music, put music on for about 15 minutes before class starts. People would even bring, students would bring their dates in just to hear the music, and then the date would run on to their own, her own class. Mm. You know, Look, so. I need to tell you this. I need to tell you this, uh, Eugene, that you said that. What I've learned in my little uh, time on the planet is, yes, you, you hear the thing is, you, let's put you in your triple threat. Yes, you're a photographer. I mean, I, I, I yes, you are, you're a fine photographer. You you're your archivist photo, um, uh, archivist, you know, but an archivist photographer. Yeah. We, we you, you are so needed. You are so you know what that's about. That's one yeah. thing that so that's true. Yes, yeah. you're the Henry Dumas, thing, but remember Henry's work is still limited. But but but, but so and, and and then you've created. I, I would say this. I'm I'm I'm, I'm giving. I would say it this way. You've created. You you've you how do you say you you. You've curated the the you, you've cultured you you've you, you've made sure that the, the the cult or the the denizens of of the Duma denizens uh, stay on point. You you created the code. You created the code for Duma. That's another thing you've done. But yes, you have your own work. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You, you, now you, now other people might might put things in certain order. Some people might think of you as a photographer. Some people might like me yeah. think of you as as, got, as a Duma guy. Got Some people do. That in, you know. In you Man, I was appalled, man. And it, when he first said that, I, you know, I, I went and took my characteristic meditation nap. And I said, boy, this is, what the hell is he talking about? And, but, but you're a fine and, poet. Uh, and then I thought, well, that's fine, you know. No. <laughs> and then another dude, another critic, Melvin Dixon is his name. He, was, he, died, he died young. He was a brilliant critic. And uh, he said Eugene Redmond's uh, work on Henry Zuma surpasses his own work. Yeah, I heard that part. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I'm trying to explain something else to you. kind of crazy in a way. But you ain't listening to me. But I'm cool. I'm cool. But you ain't listening to me. I mean, for one thing is service. Ah. That's that's, that's what I believe in. That's how I came into the world, understanding the world, to understand the world, that a person of service, you know, that you serve, you know, you serve your family, you serve your, you know, if you go to church, you serve your community, you serve your school, uh, you save, your, you serve your neighborhood, you know, you 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 do service. However, you can help people. Yeah, but I'm, well, and uh, uh, so 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 that's that's one thing I believe in. And I and I I've taken whatever have fallen on my have fallen on my shoulders and and try to serve with that. Well, there's try to carry that. You there's, know? there's a bunch of us. Well, well, there's a bunch of us who you do the same thing. Of the, exactly. There's a bunch of uh, that that tribe. But let me let me again let me try to end this once again. But you you Midwesterners, you all do this all the time. You just never can stop. But let me just say this. I would merge. I would merge you. I would when you did. I one one of one of the presents. One of the many presentations we've seen you do. One of the things you did one time was you took out a quarter and you did a Henry Dumas poem, and you know you right. you, you said you know yeah, the, yeah. The, America. The, 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 one of my favorites too. And when you flipped that quarter up in the air to do to to illustrate the thing, it was just so profound to me that I will always have that image. Of you, people tell me that everywhere, man. This, Africa, Europe, they said they can never get forget it. That's what I'm trying. To, what I'm trying to get at is that you and Henry merged at that time. Yeah. Do you understand? To with that poem, to me, me personally, I'm not. You that that's the merging. 
that that's you whatever else you've done all the other stuff you've done yeah yeah but it's concretizing that very small poem and that gesture and that presentation and that service if you want to put yes in that service that you've done thank mm. you so much wow yeah so yeah, yeah. i've had people you know, and I, I did it with a bunch of children not too long ago, and man, they was fascinated. You know, yeah. I think they were say, seventh graders or something. Mm. Yeah. But uh, okay, I said, well, hey. We got we we we're rolling, man. Yeah, I see. I see you in December, man. I got I got I got I'm gonna write you an email pretty soon to tell you what what what, what my plans are. And perhaps you can you can help or you know as you say be of service. We'll see what happens. Uh, so, oh, so okay, All okay. Right. Thanks, care, man. thanks so much. All right, well. later. All right, bye bye.